Ayan, good afternoon teachers and welcome to our um, Bright Space series, no episode number 5. This is part 5 already of our Bright Space uh, episode. Okay, and again, before siguro tayo mag-start teachers, okay, uh, I'd like to first invite everyone to please um, share no, our link um, to your uh, social media platforms, to Facebook, to um, to our to your um, uh, TikToks, uh, Instagram, or wherever, okay, uh, so that we can invite more educators in our session for today, okay? And before I introduce our session for today, and before we start our session for today, I'd like to first greet our teachers, okay, who are already in the chat, no, napakaaga po, no, as early as 5.01 p.m., okay, and uh, I'd like to greet, good afternoon, to uh, Sir Alan uh, Brutas, magandang hapon po. Teacher Mary Grace Castillo, good afternoon. Teacher Leo Sel Villantes, Teacher Hitish Kumar Sharma, Teacher Maria Linda Bucal, Teacher Lea Mendoza, of course, no, uh, Sir uh, Coach Jeffrey Beltran, who's always here, kahit meron siyang training with public school teachers, dumadalo pa rin siya. Of course, Teacher May Baisa Versosa, okay? Nakita ko yung post ni Teacher May kanina na meron siyang shirt, no, customized for their team. No? And congratulations, of course, to Wakelet Community for having the Community Week, a successful event. And of course, Teacher uh, Joella Geriba, Teacher Maria Gia Bilarmino, Teacher Regina Rose Rigidor, Teacher Edward D. Awas Jr., Teacher Maria Ana Fe Sumalino, Teacher Dean Clifford Huame, Teacher Desiree Dino, Teacher Romel John Langrio, Teacher, of course, Miss Clara Lim from uh, D2L STEAM is uh, here. Okay, maraming maraming salamat, Miss Clara, for always uh, um, monitoring our chat as well. Okay, and of course, Teacher Juji Asuncion. Teacher Jasper, uh, Jasper uh, Teacher Florence Caceres, Teacher Gemma Rivera, Teacher Ernest, Sir Ernest Filipino Lectures, of course, no, si Sir Ernest, and Teacher Nguyen Kim Ngan, Teacher M.A. Abiga, Teacher Tess, Dada Bog is also here, Teacher Rosie Rojosores, Teacher Justoni Peria Pasis, Teacher Ronnie Idian, okay, um, if I'm mistaken, Teacher Ronnie, tama ba? Uh, Lopez Quezon, Teacher Hanzo Hatori, Teacher Maureen Diokno Tandog, Teacher Georgetta Rosu, Teacher Christine Dantes, and of course, again, no, um, uh, Teacher Ronnie once again. So maganda, maganda hapon po sa inyong lahat. And um, welcome to our part 5 of our session for today. Of course, before I also move on and um, and start our session, I'd also like to congratulate no, because I was there yesterday to um, Giniangan National High School. A special shout out, okay? to uh, Miss uh, Raquel Mar Marsonia, okay, the grade team, uh, grade 10 team coordinator of uh, Guineangan National High School for a successful moving up ceremonies. No, kasi ako po yung nag-serve as uh, the guest speaker of uh, Guineangan National High School's uh, moving up ceremony. Okay, kaya po wala ako last Ah, okay. PUP Santa Mesa po pala si Sir Ronnie, no. Okay, iba pa lang Ronnie Sir Ronnie isa pang nakilala ko, no. Okay, anyway. So, congratulations of course. Congratulations also to the many students okay, who are moving up, either moving up or graduating. Uh, at this point, no, during this period. And of course, okay, congratulations to the parents, administrators, and most of all, our teachers who have been preparing a lot. No? Napakahirap po na yung invitation, yung program, yung pag, um, pag-coordinate with the guest speakers, etc. Napakadaming isipin, okay? But anyway, congratulations for having, ano, no, for your successful events. And of course, good luck for those who are still yet to have their moving up ceremonies and graduation. Okay? Now, teachers, our session for today is on facilitating synchronous and asynchronous classes. Okay? Uh, this one is uh, supposedly no, um, to be given okay, last week, no, June 29, um, 2022. Okay? But unfortunately, it overlapped to our CPD program last time. And we had to move it to another date, no, which is today, no, uh, as, as again, no, advised by um, our uh, by the D2L team, okay, to have it on uh, instead, okay, on the um, on the twenty um, nga, now, no, uh, on the sixth of July, no, para mas mas walang masyadong kasabay, hindi tayo masyadong cramps sa schedule, and of course we can actually talk about this properly, okay? So, and maraming maraming salamat for uh, for being here, okay, despite the change in schedule. Yan. Okay, maraming salamat. Kung Welcome po. Maraming salamat din uh, Sir Ronnie no, for, for this. Okay, so today, uh, teachers, no, ang pag-uusapan po natin ay facilitating synchronous and asynchronous classes no, with Brightspace. Okay? So pag-uusapan natin basically yung concept 
ng um, synchronous and asynchronous as well as uh, the bichronous uh, teaching, okay, which I'm going to also introduce later on and talk about. Okay? And then we're going to look on some of the features of uh, Brightspace okay, as an LMS okay, that provides or supports fully uh, synchronous and asynchronous classes. Kasi syempre, ito na yung isa talagang popular modality no ng um, ng teaching okay, nowadays no regardless if bumalik po tayo no kahit po as according to the news our um, new DepEd secretary uh, Sara Duterte is uh, targeting uh, November as the full on-site um full on-site um, education of our students so babalik na 100% of our students into the classroom on uh, on November 2022 okay pero regardless of that teachers no okay kahit po bumalik pa rin tayo sa face to face no okay or on site learning keep okay? hindi pa rin po mawawala yung online aspect ng learning okay and that's one thing that I'm very confident that's um definitely going to continue therefore okay yung concept ng synchronous at asynchronous classes and learning will likewise continue as well okay yung synchronous ang um, siguro lang difference is that hindi na siya mangyayari sa um, sa ano no, sa ano sa online okay so, pwede siya maging on-site okay talagang face-to-face -face na yung synchronous learning natin okay pero of course okay meron pa rin mga instances that i think okay we will also still meet no online like example consultations or kaya mga small events okay magiging online pa rin tayo okay uh, and of course no yung uh, yung tawag nating asynchronous classes or learning sessions okay that will still continue with um, or online. Okay, kasi alam natin no, um, that we can definitely support the learning of our students beyond synchronous sessions. Okay? So, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Okay? That's what we're going to explore for today, okay? Which is facilitating synchronous and asynchronous learning. Okay? That's what we want to explore for today. Okay? So once again, I am your uh, facilitator for today, moderator as well, okay? I'm Franco Nicolopi Adun, okay, your Google for Education Certified Trainer, Administrator of Kaga by Teacher Support, okay? and of course, um, Social Media Influencer of D2L no, in the Philippines. Okay? So I hope to really promote no, this wonderful, this amazing um, um, platform for all of you. Okay? So before we get into the features of Brightspace that promotes uh, synchronous and asynchronous learning. Let's first look at okay, uh, the different the concepts no, and really look back at um, these ideas of synchronous and asynchronous learning. Okay? And I'd like to start with, of course, na pag usapan natin tong asynchronous and uh, synchronous learning, um, unahin mo natin syempre yung session objectives natin. Okay? Para lang clear tayo and we are all on the same page when we talk about Exactly, no. What we're going, so we're supposed to talk about today. Okay. So una una, evaluate natin yung blending of synchronous and asynchronous approach to a more thorough, um, using the bi sorry bichronous approach. At sa kasempre, no, differentiate natin. Okay. What is synchronous learning and what is asynchronous learning? What's our best practices in doing so? At mamaya teachers, no. Okay. Magkakaroon po tayo ng survey. Okay. So pag I will be serving you uh, about your experience. Okay. Um, on synchronous and asynchronous learning, and this could become a full pledge article. Okay, so mamaya, mag-usapan po natin later on. I will also be giving the link to the uh, survey form no, about uh, on synchronous and asynchronous experiences of our educators. And of course, identify best practices for synchronous and asynchronous approaches. Okay, so let's start, teachers, at pag-usapan na natin tong synchronous and asynchronous learning na to. I-contextualize muna natin, syempre, no? Okay? Let's first talk about, no? gagawa ka po ng qualitative research, no? Either that, the, ano, no, um, at teacher Lord Lena, or we're actually going to be doing sort of like an action research, okay? So, but depends, no? What kinds of data we'll be able to collect. Of course, okay, this data will also be shared, no, with the D2L team, because they're actually also be the one um, really interested no, about your ideas okay, and opinions about synchronous and asynchronous learning. Because the Brightspace, D2L's Brightspace team is really on full um, uh, ano, um, pledge um, effort okay, on supporting synchronous and asynchronous learning. And that's the reason why they wanted to know exactly what are the challenges of the teachers you know, when it comes to synchronous and asynchronous learning and how can Brightspace uh, attend or address these 
problems. Okay? So let's begin, teachers, with the context. Ano nga ba tong context nito? Saan tayo nang gagaling? When we talk about synchronous and asynchronous learning, saan tayo nagsimula? And why are we doing this? Okay? And the first one is that, of course, no? Ay, isa sa mga uh, pinanggagaling natin why we wanted to talk about more about synchronous and asynchronous learning is that there is a disconnected synchronous and asynchronous approach. Okay? Now, this is based on experience and based also on some conversations okay, and interaction with different schools. Okay? The first thing that I notice when we uh, do synchronous and asynchronous approach, para silang magkaibang lessons. Para silang magkaibang entirely different experience. Okay? You experience one thing in synchronous, okay? but it doesn't flow into the asynchronous session or part. Okay? And this is one big problem. Okay? Because when we talk about um, synchronous learning and asynchronous um, learning, no? okay? these are not necessarily B, no? separate entities or approaches. Okay? Instead, okay, um, this could be something that could actually merge okay, and be fused together in order to create a more holistic experience with our students. Okay? Say, for example, a classic example ng uh, disconnected synchronous and asynchronous approach. Okay? Nag nagkaroon ng synchronous session, uh, there is a video conference, okay? and then uh, the teacher discuss a concept or information in the uh, synchronous session. Then whatever was discussed was simply just repeated in the asynchronous. Same information, same content. So there's actually no uh, progression, okay? and there's actually no development from the synchronous session onto the syn uh, asynchronous session. Okay? Another example of disconnected synchronous and asynchronous approach. There is a synchronous session. There is a video conference. The teacher talk about a certain concept, idea about uh, from the, the, his, his or her subject matter. And then there is an asynchronous session which is entirely different from what was discussed okay, from the synchronous session. Okay? So there is like, uh, yes, di differences, variation, but they're totally disconnected. They're like not related at all. Okay? So the students okay, cannot essentially use what they learned from the synchronous session going to the asynchronous session. So that is a problem that we have no? oftentimes when we do synchronous and asynchronous approach. Okay? So that's the first thing. And the first one, uh, why we're, we wanted to revisit no, the idea of synchronous session and asynchronous sessions or learning. Okay? And of course, later on, the concept of bichronous learning. Okay? Next one is uh, linear arrangement and utilization of synchronous and asynchronous approach. Okay? So basically, what happens is that um, in, in, most, in some cases, no, okay, wherein you have like a very linear um, utilization, like example, you have a synchronous session followed by asynchronous session. Okay? Now, while that um, actually could be a good um, a progression, okay, it actually is very linear. That's what I mentioned earlier. Sometimes uh, the synchronous session okay, just continued in the in asynchronous session without with no connection whatsoever. Okay? So there's no transition. There's no um, uh, connection between what was discussed in the synchronous session into the asynchronous session session okay very problematic as if the student took um entirely two set two sets of lessons okay from the synchronous session into the asynchronous okay i know there's a temptation to do that because of the lack of time so yung isang lesson binigay sa synchronous a different lesson was given in the asynchronous okay that's again sometimes a temptation but something that we should avoid teachers okay so kailangan hindi siya um, linear, no? Yung arrangement and utilization natin ng synchronous and asynchronous approaches natin, okay? Second, uh, third one, th third motivation, no? Why we wanted to revisit synchronous and asynchronous uh, session is the myth of independent learning. Teachers, okay? Of course, we wanted our students to be independent, but sometimes, okay, in most cases na I have observed no, and I have interacted with some teachers, okay, when they design their, uh, their uh, asynchronous learning sessions, okay, uh, there is that I don't know, idea that, okay, my, my students will definitely go through this, okay, and um, I should just simply like, put all the contents here, activities here, and they will be able to do it. Okay? And that's it. Okay? 
But that's not the, the truth, uh, teachers, no? Okay? Alam natin na kapag ganun lang ginawa natin, okay? Sometimes our students would not even touch or even read, okay? Or even watch the videos we put there, okay? So kailangan, when we talk about uh, independent learning, okay? We actually structured it in a way, okay? That the students, well, one, can actually do it on their own, okay? That the things flow properly, no? And there's no confusion, okay? Second, that there is a very strong, um, I don't know, um, structured and well-designed activities, okay? That allows them to actually engage in your asynchronous, okay? Without losing momentum or losing motivation or interest. Kapag kasi, for example, nilagay mo lang dun yung readings, okay? Okay, read this, okay? Watch this, and then answer this, okay? The students would not really find like why would I do that okay or why would I uh, what's the meaning no or what's the purpose okay of getting into those uh, asynchronous materials okay so now I'm now going into the concept of connection okay so this is where now the connection between synchronous and asynchronous would actually make sense okay because your asynchronous would be so much valuable if it has connection to your synchronous sessions, okay? And your synchronous session would actually be enriched and would be uh, diversified, okay, in a way, uh, if you also connect it to your asynchronous session, okay? So ngayon, in those three ano, no, ideas, okay, teachers, okay, uh, we are now justifying why there's a need to connect uh, our synchronous and asynchronous learning sessions, okay? Okay, the fourth one, okay, and um, I don't know, um, uh, idea no, why we're revisiting uh, synchronous and asynchronous learning is the idea and the danger of compliance, okay? So marami sa mga students natin are not necessarily learning maybe, okay, uh, during the asynchronous learning, but just trying to comply with the requirements, okay? So how do we verify this? Okay. So now, once again, okay, this kind, this verification process, this ability, ability of our, I don't know, of our educators, okay, to actually see if learning actually occurs, no, in the asynchronous learning, is for them to actually use their synchronous sessions as well. Okay. Yan yung danger of compliance. Okay. Could be the petix culture, maybe. Um, uh, teacher, I don't know, uh, uh, teacher Lawrence, okay? But uh, again, um, hindi lang siya about the petix culture, no? It's not about the idea of compliance or the danger of compliance also emanates from the idea that the students do not actually see purpose, okay? And they don't actually see the reasons why these things are being done, okay? So therefore, especially for them, no, they, if they wanted to pass, they simply pass it, okay? Without actually engaging into the assessments or engaging into the um, to the learning process. Okay, kasi magkaiba yun, no? uh, A student that actually pass and actually immerse himself into your learning sessions, regardless if it's asynchronous or asynchronous, um, and then submitted an output. Okay, compared to a student, okay, who just did it because he needed to pass the subject. Okay, those are two different things. No, okay, and now. Again, gentlemen, papasok, no? This is where the dynamics between synchronous and asynchronous will become very, very important, okay? Because this uh, synchronous and asynchronous dynamics, okay, would actually allow us to make sure that our students are fully engaged into our uh, materials, okay? Into our assessments, okay? And, uh, of course, no, into the um, asynchronous activities that we have provided for them. Okay? It's so danger of compliance. Kailangan natin yang iwasan, okay? And again, we can avoid that if we can properly design and implement our synchronous and asynchronous sessions. Okay? And of course, okay, ayan na. Okay? <laughs> and I think teachers, no, pa-confirm naman, okay, that uh, we all have experienced this at one point or another. Okay? Yung tinatawag na educational amnesia. They learned now, they recall, remember, after a test, they forget all of it, okay? Like, for example, if you, after your periodical test or after your term test, okay, if you once again ask them about your particular content or topic, it's as if the entire content was gone, okay? 
So they, they tend to forget. And again, babalik tayo dun sa last point natin kanina. No? Okay? Sometimes the students are just like understanding, trying to understand, memorize, or recall okay? uh, content just to be able to pass a particular um, test. No? Okay? So now, what's happening, teachers, there, no? if, if that's the case, okay? then um, your, the learning design no? okay? is actually more on teaching to the test okay? or teaching for the purpose of the test. And therefore, the student's reaction then is that to just simply understand and memorize and, and know no, about your subject just for the purpose of passing the test. Parang walang enrichment no, or walang deeper meaning or deeper um, in motivation yung mga students natin to actually try to understand your subject area. Okay? Yan po, no? sabi nga ni Teacher May, vice versa short-term memory. Okay, pagkatas ng weekend, nawawala na. Okay, parang after mo ng one week na pagtuturo, okay, dumaan yung weekend, tapos na. Okay? Nawawala na kagad yung kanilang uh, ano, no, uh, learning. Tama din yung idea ni teacher uh, Desiree Dino, no? Okay? No real-life learning, okay? Kasi again, no, kapag hindi natin kayang dalhin, okay, uh, yung ano no yung yung learning okay, to that deeper sense of uh, ano appreciation okay then the students will always just get to know and understand things okay for the purpose of test that's it yan din no teacher Alan Brutas okay no memory at all sometimes okay hindi lang talaga ano na minsan nawawala na talaga okay pati yung kanilang mga memories no okay and of course yan meron din kay teacher Christine Dantes no low retention rate okay pero teachers again Lahat ng mga bagay na to, no? okay, of course, okay, will still be a may factor pa rin dito ang student motivation, student uh, attitude. Okay? Pero kayang-kaya po natin gawan to ng paraan when we make sure that our learning design, in this case, no, the dynamics between um, our um, synchronous and asynchronous uh, sessions no, are properly fitted together in order to avoid these things. Edu um, educational um, uh, amnesia, uh, danger of compliance, okay? etc. Okay? So we can do that. Okay? So yan, no, medyo nag-worry na raw si Teacher Lord Lena. Grade 12 math, ang hawa ko, medyo mabigat. Okay? So yan, teachers. No? So again, we can not fully resolve the issues on that one, okay? but having a fully designed and well-designed synchronous and asynchronous learning helps you a lot in making sure these things never happens or minimize in your classes. Okay? So yan ang ilan sa mga context natin teachers, no? okay? Na pinagagalingan why we wanted to revisit the concept of synchronous and asynchronous learning for today. And of course, okay, also get to be introduced to the to the ano, no, to the features and aspect of uh, D2L's bright space as an LMS no to support synchronous and asynchronous learning. Okay? So ngayon, puntahan na natin yung concept ng bichronous approach because this is what we have been um, advocating no? okay, when it comes to synchronous and asynchronous learning. Okay? Na kailangan, the synchronous and asynchronous learning are properly fitted no? with each other in order to actually facilitate a holistic learning experience of our students regardless if they're online, on-site, or a combination of these two. Okay? On-site and online. Okay? Yan, marami salamat no teacher Desiree Dino. Student attitude and teacher's pedagogies ay mga big factors. Okay, so to, may combinations yan, okay? So hindi lang siya student attitude, our learning pedagogies and of course no learning designs will also matter. Okay, kaya nga itong pag-uusap natin no and as we talk about Bikerns approach, that's actually very important in understanding, okay? And addressing this um this um different things, okay? Now, let's go to Bikronus approach, okay? And what is this Bikronus approach? That's the first one, okay? Is that, um, let's talk about first, no? Synchronous versus asynchronous, okay? Now, teachers, I have a question before we start defining these two, okay? If you think about it, okay? If you're going to implement synchronous and asynchronous uh, learning approaches, okay? In terms of like ratio, which should be more? Synchronous or asynchronous? Okay, so let me know in the chat, teachers, okay? Which should be more in terms of like um, uh, content, okay? Activities, etc. Synchronous or asynchronous learning sessions? 
Yan. I'll be waiting in the chat features, okay? Uh, medyo may delay lang ng konti, no? Uh, in terms of like uh, synchronous, more than async, okay? According to teacher Desiree Dino, okay? What else? Uh, siguro, yan. Pumapasok na, yan. Sync, uh, synchro po, according to teacher Lawrence, okay? Synchronous, okay? According to teacher Alan, synchronous also. Teacher Edward, synchronous as well. Uh, and I think puro synchronous, no? Okay. Yung ating activity, uh, ano, no? um, choice dito. Okay? Now, teachers, okay? based on the adaptive design for learning no? okay? of uh, Ateneo de Manila University, okay? when we talk about the ratio and uh, ano, no? percentage, okay? whether it's uh, synchronous and asynchronous, okay? actually, they recommend that there be more asynchronous than synchronous. Okay? Now, let me just explain no, why there, there should be more later on. Okay? Pag-uusapan natin exactly bakit nga ba kailangan mas madaming asynchronous and synchronous. Okay? Uh, let's first do define no, synchronous and asynchronous first and their benefits before we understand why it's recommended to have more asynchronous than synchronous. Okay? So let's get into these teachers first. I-define muna natin. Okay? Ang synchronous sessions. Okay, so when we talk about synchronous sessions, okay, alam ko po na encounter na nito na maraming beses. We have always encountered no defined and uh, talk about synchronous sessions, okay. But just for everyone's refreshment, no, and for everyone's minds to be refreshed, okay, synchronous learning, uh, online learning is defined as a course in which all content is delivered online and students can engage with it from anywhere, okay. However, there is a real time meetings with students have to engage with that with at the same time, no? according to Martin and Oyarzon no? in 2017. Okay? But again, teachers, okay? even the on-site learning experience no? could actually be considered synchronous. Okay? So basically, when we think about synchronicity, no? okay? because uh, the word no, is actually from the word, uh, the, the root word is sync, no? uh, it means that your students are expected to be learning at the same time. Okay? Walang nahuhuli. Walang na, uh, ano, no. So basically, uh, what, we're, what we're looking at no, in synchronous sessions, okay, uh, it follows more or less the teacher space. Okay? The, the design, no, the teacher's design space. Okay? So big sabihin, na-dedictate, merong real-time meetings like video conference, okay, on-site okay, um, sessions. Okay? So that's what we call no, and that's what we have okay, when we talk about synchronous session. Sabay-sabay, natututo, or inaasahang matuto ang mga estudyante. Okay? So, hindi natin sinusundan, okay? basically, yung student pace dito. Okay? So, for example, kapag meron kang ipa, um, gusto ipapanood na video, lahat sila manunod ng video at the same time. Okay? Kung meron silang kailangan sagutang um, guide questions for that video, they will have to answer those guide questions at the same time. That is synchronous sessions. Okay? So, easy to define. We have been doing that for quite a long time, okay? Now, benefits, okay? And um, some drawbacks of synchronous sessions, okay? The first one, when we talk about synchronous sessions, the first benefit of it is that it has a sense of immediacy and spontaneity, okay? Often not possible in asynchronous sessions, okay? So, when you think about um, synchronous sessions, that this is what we really are I don't know, missing, no? When we did the online uh, learning through asynchronous sessions, is that that immediacy of reaction. So, a student, uh, doesn't seem to understand the concept, you can reply right away. Okay? While, for example, no, if it's async, you can't actually right away give a feedback okay? until you actually are able to see the output of the student. Okay? But in the classroom, in a, in, a, in a video conference, or in an on-site setup where you are with your students learning together, you can assist and actually intervene as soon as possible. That's immediacy. Okay, spontaneity. Okay, when you, when you are, uh, of course, no, in a um, synchronous session, okay, you can always guide. Do you tawag nating teaching moments? Okay, napakadami na, no, yung mga teaching moments na suddenly you realize that your students are more interested in a particular topic, then you try to mo, uh, to uh, max uh, maximize on it, okay, and actually draw more interest based on that. Okay. Second one is that there is an ideal for personal interactions, both pl uh, plenary sessions or small groups, okay? So there is that social learning aspect, okay? And we know teachers, no, that education, no, okay, is actually also a, uh, I just forgot, no, sino nga ba ang nag-propose, no? I, 
I don't know if it's Bandura who actually proposed the idea of social learning. Okay, but that's one of the uh, major uh, concepts no in that we studied no as educators no yung social learning uh, theory no. Okay, and of course, okay, aside from that, they can produce a greater sense of community, especially with everyone gets to participate. So that's what we are missing no. Okay, as according from the uh, from the um um ano no um the three C's no. Uh, in the ADL um, of Ateneo, okay, they actually make uh, ano, no, uh, say that for learning to be to be more effective, okay, that the learners must be in a community of learners where they can interact, collaborate, and actually learn from each other. Okay, so yun yung tawag na sense of community, okay, belongingness, okay, that you are not learning alone, okay, and it's going to be very important, no, uh, for our students, okay, yon. Maraming salamat, no, Teacher uh, Lawrence for that, okay? Uh, medyo na-recall ko ng konti, no, okay? And of course, meron ding drawbacks ang mga ang synchronous sessions natin. The first one is that scheduling is difficult. Uh, difficult. Lalo na ngayon, teachers, okay? Uh, for our teachers in the, in the, ano, no, um, in the, um, in the public school system, okay? Uh, we know how how hard it is to to bring students, no, in the classroom given the size requirements of DepEd, okay? So scheduling will become very difficult, okay? Um, even for example, you have a hybrid setup, okay, or um, a flexible setup wherein some students go online, some students go on site, okay. You will also really find difficulty, you no, know, in setting up, okay. Uh, when do we meet online? When we do, do we do we meet on site, etc. And uh, this is what I do not want to happen. You know, that the burden, okay, uh, essentially will now fall on the teachers once again. Mas dadami ang load ng mga teachers. Because they have to accommodate different schedules of their students, okay? Na merong on-site, merong online. Talo na naman si teachers. So sana po yun yung hindi mangyari, no? okay? Kasi that will definitely no, um, strain more our uh, our teachers, no? our, our Filipino uh, teachers in the Philippines, okay? Okay, and of course, uh, synchronous sessions may be challenging for people with families and busy schedule, okay? Um, especially, for example, if the synchronous session happens online, okay? Walang mag-guide sa student, no? lalo na pag mas um, younger kids, no? Okay? Yung mga older kids natin, yes, we can expect a little more sense of independence and ability to um, manage their own uh, learning, okay? But of course, okay, they still need guidance, no? especially if they're at home, okay? And of course, again, uh, that will be difficult later on no kapag uh, nagkaroon na tayo ng combination ng asynchronous at synchronous okay um uh, in our new setup next school year okay uh, and again they are biased for the most extroverted and articulated learners okay um of course alam natin no na may mga students okay who are uh, more extrovert okay so therefore they actually are able to maximize no and enjoy um, synchronous sessions kasi kasama nila yung mga classmates nila, okay? While some students, okay, are not really learners, no, of a big crowd, okay? So if they're in a big crowd, they don't actually uh, reach their maximum potential, okay? And of course, yung mga hindi masyadong articulate, no, pagating sa mga um, um, online, oh, sorry, um, on-site sessions or face-to-face -face or kaya uh, big group sessions, okay? Hindi sila nakakasalita, hindi sila nakakaparticipate, Okay? And of course, the last one is they often provide limited time for reflection. Okay, that's that is that's what's really missing sometimes. No, the reflection part sa dulo. Okay, how much have I learned? Okay, what did I learn today? Okay, uh, how do I use what I learned today? Okay, those questions. Alam ko nang di naman siya dun natatanong kasi nga kulang sa oras. Okay, limited lang yung ating synchronous sessions. Okay. Uh, etc. Okay? So, yung mga ganong klase, yung aspect ng um, ano no, ng um, aspect ng ano no, ng synchronous sessions, okay? Um, limits the reflection, uh, the ability no, for our students to actually reflect on learning. Yung tiyatawag nating metacognition. To learn how they learn and to understand how they learn. Okay? Something's missing, no? Unless the teacher actually targets it during the synchronous sessions. But of course, no, that's very rare kasi most of the time for synchronous sessions are usually allotted for the actual encounters, okay? Now, that's for synchronous session, okay? So let's now look at some best practices in uh, synchronous sessions, okay? Ano nga ba itong mga magagandang uh, practices natin for synchronous session, okay? So the first one is that um, when we think about uh, synchronous sessions, okay, napaka-importante dapat meron tayong set direction, okay? Huwag tayong papasok sa synchronous session natin, okay? 
the Hindi set exactly what are our objectives, okay? What do we plan to achieve for that session, okay? Because given that your sessions are limited, maybe limited, okay? Because um, you will not yet still, no? for example, kahit five days po tayong magkaroon uh, ng class next year, definitely some of the days are not on-site, okay? Or maybe online, okay? And therefore, every time you meet your students, make sure that you have a very well-defined direction. Where do we want to go? Um, where do you want to, to, know, to bring your students? Okay? What do you want them to do? What do you want them to achieve at that time? Okay? And um, ano yung mga learning outcomes natin for that particular session? Very, very clear. No? Exactly what we need to do. Okay? And of course, aside from that, no? okay? focus on active learning. Okay? So, ibig sabihin ng active learning. So, ito na nga yung teachers, no? Yung, um, dito na ipapasok na medyo, I, I will try to now um, also inject, no? A little bit of asynchronous um, in our discussion, okay? Now, when you think about active learning, this is when students actually do the subject, okay? So, when we say do the subject, they're actually actively engaging in your subject, okay? So if there's a concept, for example, they're no longer just trying to understand the subject, they're actually now going to use the subject, okay? So say, for example, if I have a lesson on Rizal, okay? And we, uh, our lesson would be, for example, Rizal's idea of revolution, okay? So they would, they would for example, no, uh, recall the idea of or Rizal's position in the revolution, but now, okay, in the synchronous session, okay, what I'm going to actually ask them is to start thinking about or critiquing about Rizal's position in the revolution or about the revolution. No longer about deciding what Rizal's position was. Okay? So that's active learning. Students now are using your information. So ngayon dyan papasok yung uh, asynchronous, synchronous combination. Instead, no, again nga, kaya nga meron similarity. Sa blended learning, no, yung combination, yung idea ng bicrons learning is that meron mga instances na kapag, for example, okay, sa classes mo, instead of like delivering the content in the synchronous session, you deliver the content in the async session. So for example, okay, prior to your sync session, binigay mo na yung mga readings. For example, ako, I would give them readings about Rizal's position in the revolution what he thinks about the revolution. I could also give them re um, um, readings about um, Pio Valenzuela, okay, visit to Rizal, okay, and uh, how, what Rizal said to Pio Valenzuela when uh, Pio Valenzuela asked um, Rizal if the Philippines is ready for the revolution, things like that. And then when we come in into the synchronous session, I would then bring them into that idea or uh, discussion of so how, um, how can we critique, no? And how do we view Rizal's positionality in the revolution? Okay? So that's how we call active learning. So nakita nyo kagad, no? May dynamics yung aking asynchronous and synchronous sessions. Okay? They are not disconnected in, uh, in any way. Okay? So they actually feed on each other. Okay? That's what we call, um, I don't know, uh, bicrons approach when you are blending the synchronous and asynchronous learning approach. Okay? Aside from that, teachers, be, fle be fle uh, flexible, no? Okay? So when we talk about um, um, asynchronous learning, okay? you have to be flexible because sometimes, okay, there are cases that you won't be able to finish everything during your synchronous session, okay? So kailangan, meron ka na kagad backup, no? On how parts of my synchronous session could be actually converted, no? Or turned into an asynchronous session. Okay, so for example... I have a session, synchronous session. I have to deliver certain content. I have to enrich certain content, but I was not able to finish it. So instead of like um, like um, consuming no extra time or um, going over time with my students, okay, I would just simply look for materials that can supplement my lesson that was cut no in my synchronous session. Okay, so it's also being flexible. Okay, the ability to convert no of your design from synchronous to asynchronous and maybe vice versa, okay? So that you can actually do the same. For example, meron kang asynchronous activities at meron kang assessment, and then based on the assessment, you see, oops, they did not perform well. Then maybe I can go and I can discuss that, enrich that, and talk about that during the synchronous session. So the data from the synchronous session could be used for the asynchronous and vice versa. My data from the asynchronous could also be used 
in um, ano no, designing my synchronous sessions. Okay? Flexibility in your design. Again, in the terms of Ateneo's ADL, adaptability. Okay? So, ano siya, no? Okay? And of course, teachers, kapag tayo ay uh, nag-synchronous sessions, okay? lalo na kung online itong mga sessions natin, be the host. Okay? So, facilitate well. Okay? Um, of course, no, engage your students with questions, okay? with inquiries, okay? with activities. Okay? Don't be just that ano, no, um, 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 ed teachers or educator that just um, spits out information. Okay? So, kailangan marun din tayo, in a way, no? in a way, dapat marun din tayo mag-entertain. Especially if it's an online uh, synchronous session. Kasi alam natin kung gano'ng kahirap uh, i-engage or i-motivate yung mga students natin given an, an online and of course, teachers, I'm telling you based on experience. We just came back no, to a hybrid setup. And we just now we now have students in school. Okay? Our students okay, in the on-site learning seems like still are trapped in the online setup. Okay? Parang feeling nila nasa Zoom pa rin sila or nasa Google Meet. Okay? One very clear experience, no? When I greet them, okay? Good morning. The first time, I did not get a reaction. <laughs> Di ba kasi pag nag-greet tayo minsan sa, sa, ano, no, sa Zoom or sa Google Meet, hindi naman talaga sila nag-react. Okay? They just let it pass. No? And then maybe may mga konting reactions like um, heart react, etc. No? We can do that. Okay? Pero pag balik nila dito ngayon, nadala pa rin nila yung mga, ano nila, mga habits nila, mannerisms okay? for two years on being online. Okay? So something to... Uh, to also ano, no? uh, to also um, uh, take note okay, in our um, um, uh, as we go back to online to on-site sessions uh, next year okay and of course teachers okay, as much possible keep it short okay yung mga online synchronous sessions natin but of course teachers no sa online sa on-site natin pwede ka ng combination okay pag sinabi natin keep it short okay siguro what we mean is that keep short no yung yung input ng teacher. Okay? So, kung nyari, pag nasa online ka, keep short. Okay? Whatever you can already throw in the, uh, or put in the asynchronous, put it in the asynchronous. Make your synchronous sessions um, concise. No? Okay? For those who are going back on-site, okay? um, even if, for example, you have 60 minutes of on-site learning okay? or encounters with your students, okay? make sure that you don't consume the 60 minutes ng tuloy-tuloy. Pwede siya, for example, chunks of 20 minutes of uh, uh, input from the teacher, 20 minutes of activity, 20 minutes of maybe collaboration or collaborative activity with the teacher, with the students or with their classmates. Okay? So pwede yun, okay? So again, keep it short when it comes to like delivering content. Okay? So do not like throw the content in a full 60 minutes or maybe more than 60 minutes. Let's not forget, especially right now, our students' attention span is even smaller. Okay? And we don't want to, uh, ano, no, to lose them okay? as we uh, deliver our content. Okay? Now, let's go to our second one, which is asynchronous learning. Okay? So, kung ang synchronous learning is about learning at the same time, okay? when we talk about asynchronous learning, we are, it's defined no, in literature as a course where there's no online time meetings and where all content is delivered online. So, ibig sabihin, okay, ang sinusundan namang pacing at time ng asynchronous learning would be the students. Okay? So, the, the length of time they, uh, they engage with your content online, okay? the time they access your information, okay? the, um, no, no, the speed they actually accomplish your, in, your assessments, okay? that's basically some of the characteristics of asynchronous learning. Okay? So, hindi tayo nag-dictate basta-basta. Although, of course, kahit asynchronous learning and sessions pa rin yan, meron pa rin tayong mga deadlines, etc. But, um, overall, no, mas maluwag yan kumpara sa synchronous sessions. Okay? We actually give students more, ano, no, more um, liberty uh, to access the materials in their own time, pacing, no, uh, and speed. Okay? And actually, it's more, that becomes, it makes it more accommodating in terms of like, um, ano, yung level of performance and level of abilities of our students. Okay? Ngayon, uh, ano yung mga benefits ng asynchronous learning? Okay? So, the first one is that uh, there is more flexibility. 
uh, in the asynchronous kay mas madami kang pwedeng ibigay okay so for example pwede kang magbigay ng uh, research kay um, uh, period kay pwede kang magpanood ng video okay uh, pwede kang magkaroon ng activity you can also have like a collaborative activities right there so ang dami mo mga activities variations kay of engagement na pwede mong gawin in your asyn- asynchronous learning sessions okay practicality okay um, it allows us um, maybe no special our students okay um, to be able to access your materials okay with less expenses okay because they don't need for example if it's online they don't need to be able to online at saka um i don't know what they call this um hindi na kailangan mag-spend sa mobile data okay kung on site naman yan makakasag makaka-save tayo ng pamasahe nako teachers kahit po sa atin no sa mahal po for example ng pamasahe ngayon ang hirap mag-travel okay so having sessions okay or um, asynchronous sessions or days no na meron kayong asynchronous sessions would actually be very practical to all stakeholders parents administrators teachers and your students okay and of course affordability mas 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 uh, ano mas afford natin uh, for our students okay yung mga asynchronous materials not or to access the asynchronous materials overall compared to having to access them and having to go to to school having to print materials etc okay having asynchronous materials online okay and putting it online okay hindi kailangang i-print and that in itself teachers napakalaking bagay na alam natin kung gaano kamahal ang printer band papers etc okay some drawbacks though of asynchronous learning okay um isolation okay isa sa mga pinakamalaking ano no uh, drawbacks ng asynchronous learning okay um na isolate yung mga students natin because they, there's no like real um authentic interaction with the students okay or with the community of learners okay require self discipline okay hindi lahat ng students pantay-pantay sa motivation okay meron talaga mga students na talagang napapariwara na or sometimes they don't really find meaning in doing things no uh, online okay so kapag wala nagbabantay more so they will not be able to do it or they would not actually do it okay not to mention teachers no okay and i hate to see this i uh, say this no but um, let's let's be honest no okay while the, in, the, the there's a good intention on the idea of uh, stu- uh, no students left behind okay and i really agree no that there should be no students left behind okay but now it's a little bit being abused by some students okay who think who knew no that they will not at all fail okay so they some of the students no actually abuse that idea and would not even like submit requirements modules okay i have heard a, a teacher who almost cried in front of me no okay um telling a story about students okay who's just passing like a module with names that's it okay because these students know and knew no that uh, whatever they do as long as they pass no and regardless of the quality of what they pass they are meant to be passed by the teacher and that's very hard no um very hard situation for our teachers okay uh, sila yung naiipit doon sa ano na yun sa dilemma na yun okay and of course lack of instant feedback hindi kagad tayo syempre makakapag feedback na lang kung online kasi nga magkakaiba ng access point access time yung mga students natin and of course you also have limited contact with the instructor kasi nga wala tayo doon okay uh, to actually constantly monitor our students okay so best practices in asynchronous sessions. Ano naman yung mga best practice natin na napwede natin observe sa asynchronous sessions natin, okay? So you can uh, of course no create a dynamic agenda, okay? Um this one I really ano no, love uh, doing okay, for my students, okay? So what I do is that instead of just putting activities in um in um in my asynchronous platform, for example, naglalagay kami ng mga asynchronous activities sa aming own LMS, okay? Um, of course, you can also do that in your own LMS. Pero ang maganda dun is that before you even start putting activities, meron kang simple document, regardless kung yun ay PDF or kaya um, Google Docs, okay? wherein you can actually put no what the students need to achieve or they need to do for the day. Say for example, activity number one for ten minutes like this. Okay, activity number two uh, for twenty minutes do this and then submit this. Okay? And you also can do, no, for example, we also do, in our case, no, we also do a list of uh, things that they have to submit in the day or during the day or after the day. Okay? So that's what uh, we actually do. No? In order for the students to actually have a game plan or to help them manage their time. Kasi pag wala, hindi nila talaga minsan nagagawa yung, ano, no, yung mga tasks natin. But with that kind of guide, okay, with the students, okay, 
they can easily say, oh, I can, I need to spend 10 minutes for this one, 20 minutes on this one, so they can actually budget their time. Hindi yung talagang sabog-sabog and nothing at all, no, to guide them, okay, on how to approach or to attack your asynchronous sessions, okay? And of course, the second one is make it interactive. So kahit po um, asynchronous learning, hindi pwedeng hindi active yung mga students natin, okay? So always provide like thinking time and doing time. Say for example, ito yung very um, common mistakes natin, ano, no, uh, teachers minsan, on using a video, okay? Nag-assign ng video, okay? When they assign the video, that's it. No guide questions or whatsoever. Okay? And that is not making use of the video really well. Okay? So what you actually do is one, you can actually use, for example, either a video and then follow it up with guide questions so that the students can actually process the video. Or why not use, for example, Ed Puzzle? Okay? The Ed Puzzle is a perfect um, I don't know, um, platform for your videos because you can actually embed questions on it, okay? And when you embed questions on it, the students are actively engaging the content of the video, okay? And of course, for example, uh, meron ka namang task na pinagpagawa sa kanila, no? okay? So you can actually ask them to do it, okay? So for example, if there's an experiment, okay, um, or, or idea, no? You can actually ask them to, to try it out, okay? So that now, they are now actually doing your subject, okay? So lagi natin titingnan or iisipin kapag nag-design tayo for our students, Regardless kung synchronous or asynchronous, we're also always thinking, what are my students doing in my subject at this time? Okay, and that will now bring you to the idea of student-centeredness, no? Okay, talagang uh, yung design mo definitely will become student-centered because you're constantly thinking about your students as you are designing your lessons, okay? Recommend pacing. Okay, sabi ko nga kanina, magbigay kayo ng recommendations, teachers, okay? Kasi kapag hindi tayo nagbigay ng recommendations, the students will just simply randomly access the information during the day and sometimes not even finish it. Okay, pero pag meron tayo, for example, um, recommended pacing, okay, on how much they have to spend on this particular uh, activity, they would have more time or more opportunity to actually manage their learning. Okay, alam nila exactly gaano katagal sila dapat, okay, magtagal sa subject mo, at kaya sila katagal no uh, mag-spend ng time do sa other subject etc so they exactly know uh, no, no, um, what to prioritize and uh, which subject to do first or to engage with okay so that's actually a well well recommended things no uh, thing no uh, for your asynchronous sessions okay and of course um, assign clear deliverables ayun yung sabi ko niya teachers no okay pwede rin kayong maggawa ng uh, list of deliverables okay sa mga students nyo, okay? So, for example, ako, okay? Um, meron akong, yun yung sabi ko kanina, no? So, meron kaming list of activities, okay? So, nililista namin lahat as summary of all the activities for that particular sync session or async session. And then, doon sa katabi niya, meron kaming nakalagay na deliverable. Exactly what the students need to submit for the day. Para alam nila, kasi minsan magtatanong pa yan, pag, teacher, kailan po natin ito sa, kailan po namin ito sa submit or do we have to submit this today? So, if it's already in your deliverables, they know right away, I, I need to submit this, okay? So, alam na kagad nila, I have to prioritize this, okay? So, yan, teachers, no? Para sa mga async sessions natin, okay? That's definitely put a, a really good perspective for our students, okay? As they at, uh, approach. And of course, alam na kagad nila, no? Hindi nakaka-overwhelm, okay? They know exactly, ah, okay, meron akong tatlong activities, okay? So, I, I can, I definitely, I can manage or I can schedule this during the day, Okay? And of course, lagi po tayong mag-provide ng midway feedback. Okay? So, huwag natin kakalimutan. No? For example, meron kayong uh, uh, binigay na assessments okay? uh, or activities okay? or um, meron kayong mga lessons that you um, delivered via asynchronous learning sessions. Laging mag-provide ng midway feedback. Okay? That's actually very helpful for our students. Okay? Um, para alam nila exactly. And you can also gauge no? um, kung sila ba nga ay natututo or meron sila mga concepts na kukuha dun sa asynchronous sessions mo, okay? So again, you can also use synchronous sessions, okay, to give feedback to your asynchronous sessions. Again, synchronous and asynchronous sessions should be working together, okay? Now, this is the most common perspective about synchronous and asynchronous session. Magkahiwalay sila, okay? But actually, teachers, this should be 
the case. Hindi talaga sila dapat magkahiwalay. Okay? Your, sorry no, um, asynchronous po yung red dyan. Okay? Synchronous yung nasa white, asynchronous yung nasa red. Okay? So you have to actually blend them together. No? Okay? Of course, may magkaiba pa rin part. Okay? May independent parts pa rin ang synchronous and asynchronous natin. But at no way, no, dapat na magkahiwalay sila entirely. So, kailangan lagi tayong nagbibuild ng connections, okay? Where um, if you're, again, no, um, you can use it uh, both ways, okay? Either your synchronous session um, supplements your asynchronous or your asynchronous sessions supplements your synchronous sessions, okay? So, that's how we're going to do it, okay? So, always think about bridging, Bridging, okay? How do I connect my synchronous session to my asynchronous? How do I connect my asynchronous to my synchronous sessions? That's all. It's going to be the mindset, no? As you design both synchronous and asynchronous learning, okay? So, um, when you think about, uh, ano, um, the dimensions of uh, e-learning, okay? Uh, when it comes to asynchronous and synchronous, okay? So, si asynchronous, mas, ano siya? Mas towards siya dun sa cognitive participation, okay? Kasi mas um, content heavy to, okay? um, knowledge heavy. Okay? While the synchronous e-learning no, or synchronous sessions natin is actually more on the personal participation. Kasi mas may engagement okay? and we actually are able to see our students. Okay? So now, we, it brings us to the idea of bichronous learning. Merging synchronous and asynchronous learning teachers. Okay? Now, by definition, teachers, uh, Bicron's online learning is defined as the blending of both synchronous and asynchronous online learning platforms. Okay? So the students can engage with the content from anywhere at any time, but also engage in the synchronous sessions in real-time learning. Okay? So we are now, again, okay, using both synchronous and asynchronous okay, for a holistic experience, regardless if it's a high-flex, hybrid, online, or on-site learning. Okay? And again, I'd like to emphasize, even the on-site learning sessions, okay, will still no, uh, make use of asynchronous session, okay? So what, what do we have when you do bike session? They learn at their own pace, yet, okay, kahit po sila ay learning on their own pace, constantly may guidance from the teacher, okay? So nag-guide natin exactly where the learning actually goes, okay? So you have what they call a student-centered, okay, student-directed, but teacher guided learning sessions okay or learning uh, designs okay getting immediate feedback and interaction is also possible okay so um hindi tayo nagkukulang kahit for example meron tayong mga asynchronous materials okay we can easily um um give feedback no during the um, synchronous sessions that we have okay and of course communicating in an enhanced audiovisual online learning environment okay um um, hindi lang for kasi pag puro asynchronous mahirap po yun ano okay um, the students will not be able to really optimize the learning experience lalo na kung meron tayong mga audio visual learning sa, sa students sa class natin okay and they will not like, really have they will have the difficulty no making sense of everything if it's all asynchronous okay so having synchronous sessions to supplement and to shape our asynchronous sessions is actually a recommended one thus bichronous learning okay now uh, when we think about choice no so kailan po tayo at why and how tayo mag asynchronous or synchronous e-learning or um i don't know um sessions okay so for asynchronous uh we do that when we want to reflect on complex issues okay kapag masyadong um, uh, complicated hindi kaya ng sync session hindi kaya ng isang oras or dalawang oras para i-comprehend no yung isang issue then we bring it uh, asynchronously. Sige, pag-isipan nyo yan ng isang araw. Okay? So, for example, in the issues of uh, yung mga, ano, yung mga moral um, activities, okay? Um, so, for example, yung concept ng drug war, no, that was uh, implemented by Duterte for the last um, few years, okay? That's something that you cannot, like, discuss just in one period, okay? So, you can let your students, okay, discuss that, okay, um, over their own pace, okay, and discover more about it, okay, to, ma to make a better choice, okay? Now, synchronous e-learning, discussing less complex issues. Okay, so we can, issues that can definitely be talked about in like 40 minutes, 50 minutes, go ahead, no, do a synchronous e-learning for that or on-site learning for that, okay? Uh, why, okay, why do asynchronous? Students have more time to reflect because the sender does not expect an immediate answer. While synchronous learning, 
um, uh, we do that, no? So the students become more committed and motivated be because a quick response is expected, okay? So, dalawang klase ng skills to, no? Okay? Uh, the first skill here is uh, students are being asked to reflect on the learning, okay? So, mas lumalalim, okay? Mas uh, tumataas yung understanding nila. While, okay? Um, sa synchronous, no? Okay? They also get to learn that idea of, uh, ano, no? Um, yung quick responses, okay? Uh, critical thinking at the moment or quick decision making, okay? And committing to ideas, no? Right at the moment. Kasi kasi may mga ganyang instances din, no? That our students have to make a quick decision. Okay? And of course, how? For asynchronous, you can always use email, discussion boards, and blogs, okay? Of course, you can also send materials via LMS, okay? Which we're going to go through later on via Brightspace, uh, D2L's Brightspace, okay? And of course, for the asynchronous, asyn uh, we can always do video conferencing, instant messaging, um, or even face-to-face -face meetings, which we're going to have next school year. For, uh, for schools, no? Kasi kami po, meron na. Okay. So now, best practices for bichronous approach. Okay. So when we talk about bichronous approach, you can always, okay, um, use bichronous approach by um, ano, no, using a matrix, okay? So matrix lang, basically, teachers, no? Um, di ko naman pakita yung sample kasi baka po mawala ako sa presentation ko. Basically, matrix is that it allows you to list down, okay? What are you doing in the asynchronous and what you're doing in the synchronous, okay? And now, by putting it in a matrix, okay, you can actually see if the two are connected. If there's like um, connections, okay, or that the sets in or the things in the asynchronous uh, are completely disconnected to the synchronous. And that way, you can actually find ways to blend them, okay? So again, the keyword is blending. Share resources used in class, okay? Um, um, when you do bike runs uh, teaching, uh, kahit po tayo ay nag, uh, ano, no, nag, nagtuturo, um, um, example, nagkaroon tayo mga synchronous sessions, never uh, be um, selfish no, sa mga materials natin. Okay? So, for example, uh, you can turn your um, your presentations into PDF okay? or you can actually share a view mode of your presentations so that students can easily review your presentations. Okay? So, again, uh, hindi natin yung, for example, no, ayoko ibigay yung presentation ko kasi baka dyan lang sila mag -rely. Do not forget that these presentations are also instructional materials, okay? And of course, be deliberate in making connections, okay? So always find that sweet spot. Sync, ah, sorry, no, mali na naman yung ano ko dito. Nasa red po, asynchronous. Nasa white, synchronous, okay? So again, blending, synchronous, and asynchronous, Okay. And of course, you can always do uh, vertical stacking of approaches, okay? So, pwede siyang combinations. So, pwede kang, for example, synchronous, asynchronous. And then, meron kang sessions na magkahate. 20 minutes synchronous tayo, 20 minutes asynchronous, okay? Or baligtad naman tayo next time. Meron tayong 20 minutes munang synchronous, asynchronous. Let's do the materials first. And then, let's meet on the second half of our period for a synchronous session. Okay? And again, kahit po on-site, no, pwede itong gawin. Say, for example, pagpasok mo sa classroom, ang una mong gagawin no, is that um, you have your students first, read an article. Okay? So, 10 minutes of article reading first, answer some questions, okay? and then we go to a synchronous session wherein we will be discussing the articles that you have read. So, pwede po siyang ganun, no? okay? So, again, different combination, vertical stackings of approaches is doable in our setup. Okay? Now, teachers, okay? Uh, we would like you to also participate, no, okay, in our um, our uh, trying to get to understand, no, D2L's idea, no, uh, of understanding your experience with um, with um, synchronous sessions and asynchronous sessions, okay. So we would like you to answer this survey, okay. I will be putting that into the chat in the chat right now, okay. And this will be data that will be used, no, okay, by the team of D2L, okay, uh, and trying to understand exactly how you experience, okay. Um, basically, um, synchronous and asynchronous, and how can D2L's bright space help educators further? Ayan, nilagay ko na po sa chat teachers, no? sa so, pasagutan na lang po. At meron din po dyang tanong, okay? If you want to uh, be interviewed, or is it okay for you to be interviewed further about that survey? Okay, so kung gusto nyo po, pwede pa kayo ma-interview, no? Ng uh, team ng D2L natin about that, okay? So please do let us know, Okay? So teachers, tanggalin ko na itong um, uh, sa screen, no? okay? I need permission. Okay, let me just remove that permission, teachers. Okay, baka po. Um, okay. No. 
Okay, teachers, for a while lang po. Tingnan ko lang bakit siya um, ask permission. Okay. Okay. Ayan, naka-lock po sa aming domain. Okay, teachers, pa-re-access na lang ulit. Okay na po yan. Okay? Pa-refresh na lang po ng ating form. You should be able to access it now. I'll be waiting some comments from teacher uh, Sir Alan no, and uh, Sir Lord, uh, teacher Lord Lena as well if the form is accessible. Yeah. I'm also going to pin that later, teachers, sa ating uh, description ng video natin. Okay? So you can also access that. Okay? I think that should be good. Then. Okay na. Open na po. Okay? Okay, so let's now, teachers, go to our last one for today, which is, of course, no, okay, why this is still part of the Bright Space, D2L's Bright Space um, um, series, no, okay, is that now, okay, we have this very powerful LMS, okay, that gives us so much, okay, in terms of supporting synchronous and asynchronous learning, okay? Ngayon, ano nga ba yung mga features and um, aspect no, ng ating D2L's Bright Space, okay, that can, like, definitely no, support asynchronous and synchronous learning no and again teachers regardless po ito no okay even if you go back on site d2l's bright space is proven okay to be able to support your learning modality so napaka flexible no at napakaganda napaka flexible nitong d2l's bright space because they can actually customize no uh, the experience okay for your school okay maybe also guide you uh, in developing um your entire platform no, or customizing your platform okay, according to what your school will be needing. Okay? That's the beauty of D2L's Brightspace. Okay? So how do Brightspace support no, synchronous and asynchronous learning? Okay? And the first one is of course, no, ang unang-una natin dyang, uh, benefit ng Brightspace D2L is that it has cloud services. Okay? Not only that it has an, its own no, um, uh, cloud services uh, provided, no, okay? So most of your files, okay, um, uh, assessments, okay, materials, okay, are actually stored in the cloud. Okay? Plus, teachers, okay, let us also not forget okay, that aside from cloud services no, uh, in the uh, D2L's Brightspace, D2L's Brightspace also support okay, what we call yung mga existing cloud services such as, which is not a small thing, teachers, Google Drive. So yung mga, po, mga files na sa Google Drive came, okay? Um, your ano, no, your domain, your um, administrators for the D2L Sprite space of your school can easily set up a connection between your D2L's account okay, to access your Google account. Therefore, accessing your um, your ano, no, your files in Google Drive. Okay? So, napakalaking bagay. So, hindi din kailangan, hindi tayo magkakaproblema on migration. Kasi usually lang yung naging problema ng mga teachers, no? how do I migrate my files from one platform to another? Say no more teachers because D2L's Brightspace actually provides you that much cloud services. And of course, no um, interoperability, yung tiyatawag nilang interoperability with other platforms such as Google and even Microsoft Office. Okay, so kahit po yung OneDrive na yan, no? okay, ma-access din po yan ng ating uh, Brightspace, uh, D2L, D2L's Brightspace. Okay? And of course, nandyan din yung ating built-in video conferencing tools. Okay? Uh, it's actually part of what they call a virtual classroom. Okay? So meron ka kasing virtual classroom. Okay? And teachers know, D2L's Brightspace exactly encapsulates already the perfect platform in supporting synchronous and asynchronous learning. Having that virtual classroom allows you to assign learning sessions okay, um, uh, asynchronously okay, while also having a built-in capability on handling um, sessions. Okay? Now, for, based on, ano, based on um, so far, okay, on what I have known about the built-in video conference of uh, D2L, no, as long as you are a client of D2L, okay, uh, you have uh, a subscription, no, you are in the premium account, okay, you will have at least 150 participants, okay? So no matter how big your classes are, okay, you can definitely um, have that, no, have have those, um, have that many participants in your video conferencing, okay? So ang laki, okay? And again, dahil built-in siya sa loob, no, ng, uh, ng D2L's Brightspace, hindi na tayo, for example, yung lumalabas pa tayo para mag-set up ng separate Zoom account or lalabas pa tayo, for example, for another um, video conferencing um, uh, meeting, okay? Everything happens in the platform. Both your synchronous and asynchronous 
learning sessions. Okay? Very convenient for teachers, no? And also very convenient for our students, okay? Because it does not make it very confusing, no? Hindi nakakalito. Kasi nasa isang platform na lahat, no? Okay? Sabi nga nila, wala ka nang hahanapin pang iba, nandito na. Okay? So maybe that's how, ano, no? the Filipino tagline, no? Could be the Filipino tagline of D2L's Bright Space in the Philippines, okay? Wala ka nang hahanapin pang iba, nandito na. Okay? So I hope that uh, Ms. Clary is right there as well, no? To reconsider the Filipino tagline of D2L in the Philippines. Okay? Meron din tayong tinatawag teachers, no? Na tinatawag tayong content libraries, okay? So aside from the things that you can develop, okay? Um, in um, in your uh, platform, okay? Meron na rin tayong mga readily available materials, okay? So kahit yung mga asynchronous materials yung teachers, okay? Or mga um, uh, instructional materials, okay? Could also be available, okay? Uh, of course, no, siguro magiging problema lang dito is that maybe the materials, okay? Are not really as Philippines sensitive yet, okay? In terms of like content, baka wala pa, for example, Filipino subject or mga ESP subjects, no? But, okay? For other subjects, such as core subjects, no, we can expect um, that you can have access to some content libraries. Okay? So you can pull resources, okay? um, 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 plans, okay? etc. Okay? Instructional materials, okay? readily available for your use okay? for your classes. Okay? So you can fully support your asynchronous sessions okay? or learning sessions without having to be burdened no, on developing instructional materials from scratch. Okay? One thing that's very, very uh, powerful no, and really nice about D2L's bright space. Okay? And of course, teachers, okay, mobility. Okay? Ito to sa mga kailangan-kailangan natin, teachers, no? If we really want to support, okay, um, um, synchronous and asynchronous learning, bichronous approach, teachers, okay, kailangan po, teachers, okay, um, mo, mo very mobile yung platform natin, okay? Yung tipong kahit saan i-access ng mga students natin, mobile phones, tablets, or kahit sa school, sa kanilang mga desktop or sa mga provided laptop sa school, okay? They can actually do so, okay? And let us not forget, no? Yung adaptability ng D2L's Bright Space is very strong kasi nga sabi natin last time, okay? D2L's Bright Space is mobile first LMS, okay? And again, sabi nga natin, when you say mobile first, when the developers of um, of D2L's Bright Space started to develop Bright Space, they started thinking about it as a mobile platform. So kahit sa mobile platform, sa tablet, sa computer, sa personal computer nyo, sa laptop nyo, D2L's Bright Space experience remain the same. Wala na iiwan, okay? So again, perfect for your asynchronous encounters, okay? Your students will be able to access your materials just like they would access it in, in mobile phones, in laptops, or in desktop. Napaka-powerful niyang teachers, no? Niyang aspect na yan, okay? And of course, isa rin sa mga, definitely, no? When it comes to giving feedbacks, no? The immediacy of feedback teachers, no? Okay? Is that uh, D2L's Bright Space is also equipped with a grading system inside, okay? Of your platform. You actually have grading tools, okay? Inside your platform, and teachers, that's very powerful for our for our teachers, no? Okay? Na hindi mo na kailangan lumabas, ilagay pa sa record sheet o kaya magbukas pa ng separate spreadsheet somewhere, okay? All your your assessments, okay? Um, your, no, no, your, your data information, okay? Of your students are curated inside D2L's Brightspace system, okay? And it also provides you with so much analytics, okay? That allows you to exactly see What's happening to your students, okay? Like submission, performance, okay? All of those information and data could be available for our educators. So, hindi mo na kailangan mag-compute, mag-manual computation, okay? In order to see uh, and in order to know if you need to intervene um, at, with the, at your students, okay? So, yun yung mga bagay na talagang hinahanap natin um, to, some, to, ano, to an LMS, Okay? And not to mention teachers, no, gusto ko rin kayong dalhin no, dun sa website, okay, ng uh, D2L, okay, just to highlight some other things, okay, na talagang uh, magpapa, ano pa, no, magpapakulay pa lalo ng bakit, bakit D2L's bright space, okay? Why use D2L's bright space, okay? So this one is, uh, you can access this at d2l.com, okay, uh, this is where uh, you can find out more no, about D2L's, okay? I will try to put that into the chat, okay? 
para po ma-explore nyo si D2L, okay? And makita nyo na exactly why D2L, okay? Because again, I don't have the full answers to this because there's so many answers, okay, to why D2L's bright space, okay? And the first one is that uh, you can create content quickly and easily. So again, uh, building courses, okay, creating lesson plans, unit plans, okay, uh, your courses inside, knowing that there are also content libraries inside D2L's makes it very easy to create content, okay? So you can easily, of course, no? At maganda pa dito dahil naka-built in din yung video conferencing mo sa loob kung ang inyong synchronous sessions are online as well, okay? You can easily also design it that way so that your synchronous session and asynchronous sessions flows really well. Walang disconnection, okay? Okay, next one. Uh, aside from that, no, okay? Uh, D2L's Brightspace also keeps students engaged with social hub and home pages, okay? So, meron talagang separate ano, no, uh, home pages, okay? Yung mga courses mo per subject, okay? So, yung social science nila, yung kanilang mathematics, English, etc. At iba-ibang um, social ano, no, um, platforms, may mga iba rin mga uh, features, uh, sorry, um, their own um, uh, buttons, features, okay? And mga um, maybe announcements, okay? And of course, to engagement with other classmates or other learners, okay? And they can fully immerse themselves into your course, okay? So talagang well-customized, okay? To your subject areas, okay? So that's another one, okay? And uh, of course, no, here in the social hubs, no, these course pages, teachers can post reminders, uh, um, post upcoming assignments, new content, or message to kick off class discussions, okay? Perfect again, no? In, uh, in creating a dynamic synchronous and asynchronous um, combinations, Okay? And aside from that, okay, um, D2L also okay, provides no, um, as a platform, it motivates students to showcase learning experiences. Okay? As with last time, we mentioned about uh, the Brightspace uh, portfolio app okay, where students can actually build no, their own um, portfolio okay, to showcase their learning. Okay? So you can actually do this no, uh, to strengthen your reflection the metacognition of our students okay, when it comes to their learning experience. Okay? So, pinag-iisipan nila exactly why they learn and how they're learning. Okay? And aside from that, okay, nandiyan din yung provide a window into the classroom for parents. Okay? So, uh, we know no, that when it comes to, for example, asynchronous learning, we have to also have the support of parents. Okay? So, the parents and the guardians are also given a parent uh, guardian app. Okay? To Brightspace, okay, where they can actually access the content, okay. Of course, no, not the full content, no. A content just enough to let them know exactly what's happening in their sons or, or daughters, okay, education, and therefore we get the support of parents at home, which is very crucial in asynchronous learning. Kasi, kasi baka minsan kailangan nila ng tulong, wala tayo don, so um, nasa bahay sila, okay. That's the time their parents can also provide help to them. Okay, again, the parents are involved in the learning sessions or the learning process as well, okay? And of course, okay, nandiyan din yung um, it keeps students to track with built-in analytics for teachers, okay? So um, it allows teachers you know, to get to see exactly how much okay, the students were able to accomplish already, okay? So unlike, for example, pag nag assign tayo ng mga asynchronous materials, no, hindi natin alam natapos na ba niya, nasa na ba siya, Dito kaya dito as bright face, we can actually see how much the students have progressed, and therefore we can provide necessary immediate intervention for our students. Nakita mo, for example, uh, yung mga ibang students almost ninety percent, one hundred percent done na, and then you have one student yung mga na naglalag, okay? For example, nasa twenty percent palang sila, you can already assist them. Hindi yung iintay na lang natin. That's the students are are frustrated and are already willing to fail and do nothing in our subject, okay? So, matutulungan natin yung ating mga sudyante. We can help them through this uh, ano, no, analytics for teachers, built specifically for teachers, okay? And of course, teachers, uh, nandiyan din yung uh, save time for teachers with an LMS, of course, that they love. No? Talagang, the LMS, no, this D2L's LMS was actually built, okay, for teachers, okay? So, yung mga features nito are, of course, no, centered on uh, on the users, which are the teachers, okay? So aside from the students, okay, D2L's Brightspace no, team actually made it sure that the teachers are considered no, and given attention 
in the design of D2L, such as, for example, automatically release enrichment or remediation content based on uh, student achievement. So, pwede tayong mag-load na, for example, the student failed in a test, meron na kagad materials na pwedeng ipadala sa kanila automatically. Hindi na kailangan dumaan sa teacher, okay? So, the, this support no is automated no, so that the teachers can spend time on other things, okay? Aside from doing these things, okay? Quickly find and prioritize assessments to make providing feedback faster or using the quick eval. Okay, so you can also do a uh, quick evaluation scheme. Okay? So you can give quick feedback to your students, okay? not necessarily the comprehensive one, but at least your students receive feedback right away. And of course, provide meaningful feedback using tools such as the annotations and the rubrics. Okay? So there is a built-in rubrics okay? and the uh, ability to annotate your, the students' works inside D2L's Brightspace. Again, hindi na tayo third-party application, hindi na lalabas, right there and then, you provide annotations, you provide um, feedback no, to your students using a rubric. Okay? So again, you can see no, how much students okay, um, uh, how much students and teachers okay, are considered okay, in the design of D2L's Brightspace. And again, as I've always told you, teachers, no, okay, isa rin sa pinakamagandang aspect okay, ng D2L or being a client no, of D2L okay, uh, and having Brightspace as your LMS okay, is that it is a partnership. A partnership for learning, innovation, and success of your school. Okay? Hindi po kayo iiwan sa ere no, at mawawalan lang bigla ang D2L no, after nila, after nyo kumuha ng license or subscription, okay, they will continue to provide that much needed support for your school. That is what Brightspace commitment is for all schools no, who will be subscribing and who will be getting Brightspace as their LMS. So teachers, may mga panahon pa tayo. Pag-isipan pa natin. Okay? And um, uh, we will, ano, no, um, you will definitely no, not regret okay? uh, having Brightspace as your LMS. Okay? So aside, so those are uh, things, no? Okay, that uh, definitely, no, um, will um, um, make us our experience, no, in uh, in handling synchronous and asynchronous sessions, okay, much more convenient, no, and um, um, successful, okay, both for the teachers' uh, perspective and the students' perspective. Okay, so maybe we can now entertain some questions, okay, about the synchronous and asynchronous learning, okay? By the way, for those who are interested about uh, D2L's Brightspace, we will, um, part of our session next week on D2L is actually um, having uh, a discussion, okay, on everything about D2L's Brightspace. Aside from, of course, now we'll also be discussing hybrid learning and how Brightspace can support hybrid learning, okay? But uh, we'll also be having a short discussion on how do you contact Brightspace if you want a, um, a demo? Okay? How do you contact Brightspace or D2L okay? if you want to subscribe okay? uh, for your school, okay? etc.? Or if you want a town hall meeting with the team of D2L, they can actually also do that okay? in order to answer your questions okay? on how to proceed on subscribing to D2L. We'll also have that next week. Okay? So teachers, questions po. May mga katanungan po ba tayo? about um, synchronous learning, asynchronous learning, Bicron's approach, okay? D2L's bright space as well. Okay? Uh, I believe that uh, Ms. Clara is also still here in the chat, okay? uh, who might be able to also answer no, or give us some answers okay? if needed, okay? um, if I cannot answer no, things about uh, bright space as well. Okay? And, pero mukhang wala, teachers. No? Okay? Mukhang wala tayong questions. Okay, <laughs> okay so either... The, the discussion is very clear, but again, teachers, no, maraming salamat, okay, for uh, your insights no, during our session, okay, and also, okay, yep, still here, okay, and yan po si Ms. Clara pa rin, no, okay, sa, sa chat natin. So if you have questions, maybe, okay, tama pa, Ms. Clara, no, if I'm not mistaken, um, please do correct me, no, uh, we'll also be having uh, partly next week, no, a discussion on uh, the pricing um, as well as the questions about subscriptions, okay, into D2L, okay, something to, I don't know, to, to consider. Miss Clara for our next session, okay? As we also end up, no, or end, no, or close, okay? Our um, Bright Space series next week. Okay. And of course, no, definitely um, the team of Miss Clara, okay, um, will provide us a lot of information about that. Talagang um, para we can definitely make a good decision as we enter the next school year. Okay? So I think there are no questions, okay? 
I don't see questions in the chat, okay? Ayan, okay? Teachers, ulitin ko lang ulit yung, um, yung link sa ating, um, sa ating survey. So please answer the survey um, later, no? I will be putting that in the chat, okay? So if there are no more questions, teachers, okay? That will actually now, um, that now ends our session for today, okay? Maraming maraming salamat for joining us for our session today. Uh, and now, um, as, uh, as earlier, meron po bang certificate ang session natin? yes. There is still certificate, no? And this is an automatic certificate as well after you have answered the evaluation links. I'll be now showing the evaluation link for this session, teachers, okay? So please evaluate our session at https colon slash slash tinyurl.com slash d2l part 5, okay? And please do let me know if the link is working and you can actually access the link, okay? And please don't forget, that you are invited to answer no the link okay? or the survey no um, so that we can gather more information about your experience okay? difficulties okay? Um, for uh, in in doing no asynchronous and synchronous learning okay? so i'll be putting once again the link to the survey in the chat okay? so can you please kindly access the 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 link no okay so maraming maraming salamat teachers. Okay, the link now is working. Okay, and I hope that you all learned something today. Okay, uh, and um, uh, I don't know, we are able to contribute to your understanding of synchronous and asynchronous learning, and of course the bichronous approach, and of course, okay, how D2L's Brightspace okay, can actually elevate your synchronous and asynchronous experience. Okay, so maraming maraming salamat teachers. Now please stay safe, stay negative from COVID nineteen and stay positive in life. I will see you po on Saturday for our July series, okay? which will begin with uh, exploration of Google Drive okay? for the Google Workspace Essentials on Saturday. Okay? Maraming maraming salamat po and have a great day, teachers. Have a great evening, teachers.